Finals footy is here. It's also back, I'll tell you that much. G'day, I'm your host, James Clements, not to be confused with, I don't know, Blake Carousella. He pulled off a long sleeve way better than you. I don't know, I rocked a long sleeve when I was a kid, and I pulled it off pretty well. Like, you know, just like the weird little skinny popsicle-headed ginger kid with the long sleeves, it just fits, right? Anyway, this is the AFL Today Show live, brought to you by Top Sport, the home of the footy finals. Just as well, because it is the prelim finals this week. And joining me are local weirdos, full-blown footy nuffs. Some would call them AFL experts. Not many, but some. Alex Donnelly, he's actually here for a Thursday show. <laughs> Still waiting for the turtle necking to start. It hasn't kicked Ooh. in yet. I'm expecting okay. it tomorrow once I get on the plane. I, did you spike his coffee, Leo? Or? I wish. Yeah. No. Nice. Just the, uh, the old uh, little... Beep, beep, off we go. And it's like, that's not turtle neck, and that's just a stream. Let's go. <laughs> uh, and in the middle, obviously, is the social boy, Leo, uh, filling in for the stats boy. Yeah, I'm feeling healthy. The stats guy, unfortunately, is <laughs> out sick uh, with something. Well, he couldn't speak. He probably picked on- it up at daycare. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes, isn't it? When you're that small, you just run around with all these little kids. He's like licking stuff at the playground. Classic stats boy. Is this coming from experience, Jim? Uh, that's what my... So, ah, he's at the moon, <laughs> says the stats boy. He's here, he's here. He's had two cough... Yeah, he's had some cough Oh, yeah, he's, he's, he's all hopped up on cough medicine. He's flying. The moon has been pretty spectacular. He can't feel nothing. <laughs> Anyway, this is the live show. It is the Thursday team show, which is always the favourite of the, uh, oh, God, it's just can you feel the tingling excitement of the footy weekend ahead? Uh, But before we get into the breakdowns of the prelims and all the news, because there is so much news that it's ridiculous, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Jump in the comments. We're doing it right now. It's all live from (laughs) Facey as well. Azza Avery says, hello. Used to work with Azza. Good bloke, Aaron. Hello. (laughs) How are you? I'm well, thank you, Azza. <laughs> we, we are good. Uh, good. Yeah, good, thanks. How about yourself? Uh, but this is uh, live on YouTube, live on Facey. Get around all the socials and stuff. Make Leo earn his crust. Yes, so he doesn't yes honestly. Keep, so he doesn't go to the footy every weekend and just like be you know, tied up to a laptop and chucking in data. Is that what you do? Sure. He yeah, throws just, balls <laughs> over his head as well. Uh, but the cool thing is, wherever you get your podcast, like, subscribe, and star, or we'll fight you up. Footy is back for the second last weekend. Don't say it, James. Of the men's season, which yes, is Yes, I was going to throw that in there because we go through to the end of November for the dub. We do. But before we do anything else, before we do the prelims, let's sink our teeth into some news. Hey, uh, is this is this like real? Like the Petrarca vibe? Like what are we doing? It's like I'm... I'm fascinated by this Christian Petrarca story. From the get-go, Which I've been part? absolutely <laughs> just like locked in on it, just going, what's going on here? Let's pair him up with Cripper and Walsh and away we go. But it came out that Christian Petrarca's like, nah, I'm not going to the best and fairest boys. I've got a Red Bull trading camp in Austria to be at. I'd go to Austria. I'm more interested in knowing what a Red Bull training camp is for Christian Petrarca. I swear he did that last year. He did year. it last yeah. year. Yeah. Was it during the best and fairest, however? Could have been. He I was can't there remember. for a while. Does he not have enough sway to like get them to move the dates? Probably not. Probably not. Not yet. <laughs> What's the training camp? What are we doing? Like, is he gonna jump off the moon? Like <laughs> remember that red wasn't that that Red Bull dude who got yeah. like the like hot air balloon to like basically space? And then went. He just like jumped off. It's like, that's gnarly. That was sick. I also love how Red Bull have like a finger in all the niche sports and then just like F1. Yeah. It's like, we love rally. We love windsurfing, BMXing. Uh, Like that weird, like uh, F1, but for planes. (laughs) Like, which is plane races. It feels like it's just like rich dude sports. It's like, give me a submarine race or something. It's like, yes, we've all got submarines. Ring, ding, 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 ding. I've got submarines on the brain after that ocean gate. I'm not, uh, yeah, this is like me, don't get in small planes, don't get on helicopters, submarines, leave me out. Yeah, they like, they they found, they showed the photos of that one that blew up, trying to find that Titanic, and I'm like, this is awesome, <laughs> what, a, what a story. But anyway, so Petrarca's not going to be there, like, how good is this? Like, what do we make of this? Like, Melbourne are like, nah, nah, it's fine, it's all good, nothing to see here, folks. Mm. Do you buy that? I don't care. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's, like, honestly, that's it's, it's a story about nothing. He's not going to win his best. The best and fairest. There's probably still some fences to be mended given. He was like, hey, guys, I, I kind of want to leave this place. It sucks. I just don't. So maybe not a night on the beers with these mates probably doesn't help. 
That 100, this is, I would counterpoint that by going, wrong. <laughs> like, I think this is huge. I think a night of the beers with his mates fixes it. Unless you're hanging out with Clayton Oliver. Maybe he's boring. not allowed to drink beers. Maybe. It's a Can't part of his it. training camp. Well, no, it's a part beers. of the recovery from the oh, spleen true. as well. I, I don't know. I just think it's not a good look, is it? After everything we've sort of gone through with him and he wants, like he says he wants to stay, they want him to stay, but I won't come to the BNF. I don't know. A little weird. Yeah. I find it extremely, extremely strange and I do not like it. Do you it. find it sus, Jim? Very sus. Very sus. Super mm. sus. Hey, you know what else is sus? Nick Hines, mates. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. The AFL Integrity Unit's like, what are you guys doing here? <laughs> Which is awesome. Nick Hines, mates, look like bouncers from like somewhere near where Stats Boy lives. <laughs> it's just like, they're like, they've probably knocked Stats Boy back from like eight different pubs. <laughs> just like, nah, not tonight, bud. He's like, oh, come on, fellas, let me Is that Nick Hines? <laughs> And Nick Hines wanting to go, it's his bald head, it's the moon. <laughs> Is that the moon? No, it's Nick Hines noggin. Uh, but also Jake Stringer had some sus mates that they uh, allowed into Well, him and Nick Hines are mates, so yeah. they're, they're just all sus. You reckon it's a pretty hefty Venn diagram of yeah. sus mates? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like this. Um, I do love that the AFL integrity unit's like, what are they? <laughs> Literally, like, that's that's yeah. what they're doing. Like, what are these guys doing here? Like, what, what, what did they do in the – this is what I want to know – what did they do in the rooms to set off the alarm they bells? They definitely like gave Sam Draper twenty bucks. Was it just that Roaming Brian interview? You reckon? I think so. Yeah, it's like, right. who's this guy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's like when the push up king was the mates with the bikey guy, and they said, uh, "Jake, he's not allowed to come anywhere." I was like, "Yeah, get stuff." I just want to say who Dane Beams would bring into the rooms now. <laughs> oh, jeez. <Just> <laughs> I'm not Robbo. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Moving on from Mick Robinson. Hey, Caleb Sarong won the uh, Frio Best and Fairest. Expected. So. Doing a bit of Brownlow prep, their top three went as expected as yep. their Brownlow is Caleb Strong, Andy Brayshaw, and then Hayden uh, Young. Yep. So yep. They, yep. There's absolutely Makes zero sense. surprises. So. That ticks the boxes, yep. So it's all good. We've also had some other ones sort of float out and about, so I don't know. Ben King believe. didn't get in the top 10 at Gold Coast. I'm just spewing that I didn't get invited to the Blues one. What's going on? Come on. <laughs> Help a brother out. You were invited to the Gold Coast one, though. About, that was just, two weeks ago, oh, though. Okay. He missed it. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't get up there. Tropical, no, you probably were there oh, at the wait. Carlton game. That's right. I was at the Blues game, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, other little, little bits and bobs. The Swans want Frosty, Alex. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Swans do need some key position depth because Aaron Francis has come in and he's shown that he's a good VFL player that's just not good enough at AFL level. Joel Hamling never got a, got a run. Dane Ramp is old. Frosty's, what, 30, 31? I think 30, 30, yeah. Give him a two, year, two, three year deal. Come on, Frosty, come hang. Well, I think we've only offered him one. So if you do offer two to three, yeah. every that's like a pick, pick forty three. Sure, All right. no, I'd take forty. Yeah, I mean he's had a great year. So as long as the Blues keep Lewis Young, yeah. uh, Jack <laughs> Darling off to North. Well, to the point where he's actually finally gone. Yeah, can I get traded? And Stats guy's yeah. just losing it right now. He's been complaining about it for two weeks. I think I agree with Stats guy though. Because he looked past the Jack Darling. He this looked year. cooked, but he's just gonna. T as I keep saying he's just there. It's like. Take attention away from Suva. Just get someone away from him. But I reckon opposition are just looking at the, their forward line and going, well, we still got to go to Larky here. Like, yeah, they're, but they're not going to go to But then it's like if Darling. Jack Darling's 25 metres out on his own, you'll kick it to him because he'll kick the goal. Will yeah, he? I don't think he'll get out on his own. <laughs> but they, no, it's because they're Does on Suva and they're just leaving double him. Double-team Suva. <laughs> is he out there in a wheelchair? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Uh, two anyway. years is a bit much. Two years seems weird. Mm. And I'm like... Yeah. Really? Like, I could probably just go out there and have a snag. Yeah. So yeah. There we go. Uh, Trent Cotchin is not entirely convinced about the Dusty Martin stuff. What do we reckon here? He's like 0 to 1% chance. <laughs> Did he say it in front of a green screen? Because that would change my opinion. He Ooh. said it on Talking Footy. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. a green screen involved. I, I would pay. I agree. I, I, I'm with Trent on this one. Trent I, Cotchin's not known for being a brain genius. No. You said it. <laughs> Trent. I'm a big fan. <laughs> uh, I I started to get more unconvinced. That makes sense. Uh, once the sub three hundred thousand things sort of got floated out there, yeah. it's like, ah, uh, really? You reckon? Like, it's almost not. I mean, sure, he's only probably going to play half the game. Wait, are you saying you'd say no to three hundred grand? If I'm Dustin Martin, uh, yes. Me. No. <laughs> like, You're not saying I'm no to 300 so bucks. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> and like, as I've always said, I'll be the vice president of common sense for just a tidy six-figure something. Six yeah. Is that right? So whatever those six are, 
doesn't matter what's in front of it. We're laughing. But the <laughs> entire approach of Dustin Martin would be like, mm, does that cover my rent? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> My travel expenses. You know how many like pitbulls I've got. <laughs> Everyone's like, no, because you don't talk about anything anyway. Uh, so Trent Cochin, brain genius. Is he going to be like a bit of a Nostradamus? A Notch Nostradamus? I don't know. Nostradamus. A Nostradamus. There we go. Oh, yeah. That's almost got me in trouble, but that's fine. Uh, Braden Proust got the listed. Cooper Hamilton did as well. GWS cleaning out all their awesome uh, social guys. Leo, you better be on. Uh, maybe they're making room life. for me, maybe. or maybe. maybe they're delisting him, and he's just going full time into social media. Maybe. maybe, maybe we should hire him. It's not a bad idea. Let's do it. Better than stats, boy. Definitely better than stats, guy. <laughs> uh, Eagles got rid of Zane True, Jermaine Jones, and uh, Jordan Baker. Sure. It's like. I don't know if they can afford to get rid of anybody. <laughs> True. <laughs> How bad do you have to be to get to list them? They might the all get re-rookied. They might be. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of the Eagles, Stephen King was over in Perth yesterday, probably checking out the basketball. Also, putting his hand up for the Eagles coaching gig. Yep. Uh, he's a bit busy now, though. You know, still with Geelong. Yep. Yeah. So. Yep. Uh, but Hayden Skipworth and Andrew, Mc, Andrew McWalter are also Ooh. over there as well. Okay. It's... They're going to be Adam Uze. You're going to have the exactly. job three years. It's, so good, you, good you luck. You're going to get Uze. It's like, going to suck. This is why Gian Siracusa finally hasn't put his hand up for a job gun. Yeah, that one sucks. I don't <laughs> want to go for that one. Gio's like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I like that. Ash Hansen's just like, I'll take it. Everyone's like, get out of here. <laughs> uh, no one asked you. See, Dean Cox is like, no way. <laughs> Other... <laughs> They were, yeah, we're sorry. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting to the prelims. Don't worry about it. We've got the last little bits of news. I think we've got MX, BMX, Life. While we talk, people want to hear bad hear news for the prelims. We're getting there. Don't worry about it. Max King, six more years. He's got two more, like, as it is right now. Sure. You don't need to give him six more. Let him kick 50 goals next year. Harris Andrews extended till 2029. Yeah, fair. Yeah, good signing. Which checks out. Good job by the Lions. And then finally, the Crouches. Brad Crouch, Dunsky. We called yeah, that a month geez. ago. We did. Played what? One game? I don't think he played this year. No, one game in he week, played. Oh, he played whatever. week one. Well, he? You didn't notice him. So anyway, he's, he's, his, his knee's Jack been absolutely right. cooked. So yeah. Uh, he's also got a gig as a real estate agent already. Yep. Which is weird. Cool. Uh, Matt Crouch, Hatgate. Knock your hat off. Oh, that. I was like, what is this? <laughs> Remember how he knocked off the power of tickets gate? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, okay, so that there was an investigation and it got dropped. The cops went, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was the investigation. Yeah. So are you going to mess with that? No. Yeah. He knocked his hat off. It's not assault. Get out of here, idiots. Power fans having a sook. Uh, right. Now, that's all the news that I think we can bother with because the biggest thing is prelims. Yes. And we can at least... Before we even get into anything else, I kind of just want to hit on the teams right away. Cool. Because we've got- We've got one surprise. One sort of big surprise-ish where we've got Tom Stewart in for Zach Tui. Uh, Jeez. So Tui gets dropped. Ocean Mullen keeps his spot. Yeah. Sam DeConing doesn't come back. And then obviously the force change for the Swans with Callum Mills. Yep. We knew this earlier today that Robbie Fox was coming in. Yep. For the power, Ryan well, Burton. Okay, can I give the interesting part of this? Tyler Adams isn't even an emergency for the Swans. Ooh, I didn't so, that. from what I've been told, there is a lot of anger coming out of Sydney. Could he leave again? Oh, that, sure. But there's a lot of <laughs> anger coming out of Sydney that the uh, news of Adams not being selected and Fox being the one that was picked got out. It was about one o'clock this afternoon we all found out. Oh. And Sydney news doesn't usually leak. So... Apparently there's a little bit of heat on Tay-Tay there. Interesting. Uh, what is it? Snitches get stitches? Yeah. yeah. So John Lomai is just, just genius. Like, you know when you walk behind a horse, you just get kicked. Kapow! <laughs> probably happened. It probably did. Yeah. I like that. Uh, and for the power, Charlie Dixon and Ryan Burton back in, obviously yeah. for Todd Marshall out with his concussion and Will Lorenz. So pretty stiff, Yeah. I reckon. But- Hello to the Power Prawn Star, by the way. Power Prawn Star's back. Where's my man boy, Stats Dude? Yeah, we fired him into the sun. He's, he's honestly dying. <laughs> Sorry, we sent him to the moon. Is that yeah. the moon? Uh, <laughs> whiskey. Anyway. Uh, so with that in mind, we'll get into some of the matchups. We'll talk about a bunch of the players as we get into the games. But I just wanted, and I've got to assume we're on the wide camera here, uh, producer Gerald, because I uh, I keep pitching just to you guys. Yeah, so you're going to stare just to... The people. I was fascinated by this idea. So prelims, we have talked this up. Like Sydney, Geelong yeah. have had the week off. What happens when you win your pre when you qualifying final? Mm -hmm. 
make the prelim and lose. So this is the weird situation where you have this setup where you've got the week off and it's the eternal question that I love. Rest versus rust. So, and this is what a lot of- uh, a lot God, of- I love rest versus rust. There's no right answer. It's the best debate in the world. So like, oh, I'd rather have the week off so we're all good. Don't care. Could be rusty. What's mm. going to happen? Because what's happened? 2003, Swans lost. Yep, they lost to Brisbane at Stadium Australia. 2005, Brisbane went psycho. Saints lost. To the Swans at the MCG. Crows lost in 06. To West Coast. Oof. 15 was Frio. Can't remember that. Crazy. 2016, we had two. The Cats and GWS. That was Swans and the Dogs. Tigers in 2018. Chaos gear. Pies in 19. That was GWS. That game was awesome. One of the great games. Yeah. Uh, 2020 was Port and Lions. Does 2020 count Not COVID? Really, no. uh, Neither does 2021. Nah, 21 counts. They got pumped by like 80 points. Port again. That was, Sucked in. That was two years in a row at home. I, I think yes, 2020 yeah. was at Adelaide as well. Yeah, wasn't yeah it was it? against Richmond. Yeah. So That's right. It started raining. Mm. The most fascinating part of that is it was four times in 16 years before the pre-finals by. Four yep. times. Yep. So you didn't have the week off before finals, but you got the week off after your qualifying final. You basically sorted. Yep. After that... Now you've actually had a pre-finals buy, you've played, and then you take another week off? It sucks! You're getting killed! It's happened seven times in eight years! That's chaos! So what we're that saying is, like, is one of the qualifying finals winners will most likely lose this week, odd speaking. It's just maths! Yeah. Like, I'm no math scientist, obviously. We know. Or math magician, but nine of 16 teams since like the pre-finals buy came out. Like, yeah. That's crazy. So, Sydney or Geelong could be up against it. Mm. Or both. Safe. Yeah, or both. Why not both? <laughs> All right. We've got to leave stats for you. Exactly. Do. Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah he's, we need he's the like, graphics. He's like, like, like <laughs> uh, Power Prawn Star says, much rather play through. We're not mature enough to have a week off. I like that. Go Tigers says, Wombro- B-Roller? Wombro- Wombi Roller? Yeah. <laughs> Wombi Roller? And Sawman says, Power definitely suffers from buys. They do. Up the Swanee says, lol's, lol's cow. Dixon's back. Swans win then. JMC, that uh, would not surprise me. Yeah, Just I don't see how Port have gone that. off the bye this year. So that is set up for the prelims. They lost by 20 points off the bye this year too, Port. There you go. So two from two losses. Nailed it. Sawman's nailed that one on the head, right? So you've got this entire set up for Friday's game. You've got yep. Sydney versus Port Adelaide. Let's do it. It's time for the prelim previews. Previous, previous, previous. Good stuff. We go to the SCG, Alex. Mm-hmm. And when I say we, I mean you. Yes. Because you're going to the actual game. <laughs> yes. And I'll be sitting on my couch, neck and tins. <laughs> uh, Sydney. Yep. Rampaging favourites. $1.33. And, of course, all of these odds are brought to you by our friends at Top Sport, the home of footy finals. $1.33 and 19 and a half point favourites. The Port Adelaide Power are $3.30 underdogs. And the over-under is 168.5. Do you want to start at the over-under? All right. Uh, if the Swans are to win this, it's flying over. If we're hitting around a 150, this is where Port Eke it out. Yep. Yeah, I reckon I'm going to go just on the under, but Swans win. So 168, if you look at the sort of matchups between the two of them as well, like you have these moments where you go, Port Adelaide nearly hit that by themselves earlier this year. Uh, game before that, just in the mud. Game before that. In the mud. Game before that, in the mud. Basically, all of them bar the absolute belting in the last five games, because you might hear this stat in a second as well. Yeah. They've all gone under. So Interesting. The correlation there as well, what's happened? Port have won all of them. So I think I completely agree with you there, Alex. Yeah. Where if you believe Sydney can win, we're going over. Yeah. If you reckon Port drag it down, you can go Port and the under. Uh, so that's where we sort of get to, right? What's the most, like... I don't know, bashed over their head stat so far this week. Port have won eight in a row, and they won by 100 points uh, six weeks ago. Over who? Sydney. Yeah. Yeah. Who are they playing in the prelim? Sydney. Oh, jeez. That's news. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> haven't heard it. Haven't heard it this week. <laughs> so also, the other one is, yeah, belted by 112 in round 21 yep. a month and a half ago. The sort of – the setup here for me is, like, how much do you think – how much relevance and credence do you put into the idea of, like, oh, it's at this SCG this time. That doesn't matter as much. 
Most of those losses to Port have, weirdly enough, not actually come at the SCG. There's only yep. been three, I think, three. out of all those, yep. right? So I don't know how much time, none. effort, none. thought you put into that. Absolutely none. Really? Yeah. Zero. Because I'm also looking at the Swans team when the Swans lost by 112 points, when there was no Dane Rampey, no Lewis Melikin. Uh, you had Aaron Francis and Peter Laddams playing. Ooh. Like, it wasn't a great team. There was probably six or seven of the Swans, 23, that are running out this weekend. Uh that did that didn't play in that game against Port Adelaide. And that was also just at the peak of their or not the peak, it was at the absolute low of how bad they were playing. Port at the time were the form team of the competition because they they'd fired Ken like six weeks before that. They'd beaten after they'd lost to Brisbane, they'd beaten St. Kilda and started winning games and looking really good and dangerous. And then it was just like, here's this team going this way, here's the other team going the opposite direction. And it all just into this amazing crescendo where Charlie Dixon kicked like four goals. The crescendo was me drinking one million beers in yep. Noosa while this happened as well. It was <laughs> yeah. awesome. Uh, it was Leah. me getting depressed on my birthday. It was great. <laughs> Sucked in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we have to consider it a little bit, don't we? Like, I think we do. 112 points. Like. So there was an interesting one. So remember when there was the Kennet curse? Yeah, uh, you don't have to remind yeah. me. <laughs> All of those wins were home and away. When you finally played them in the finals is when you knocked them off. Is that proving Kennet's theory? When it matters. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the thing. The Swans had lost like uh, a couple of 10 years ago, had lost 13 straight games or something to Collingwood. Finally played Collingwood in a final and beat them. Mm. See, Taj has nailed it as well. That's exactly what you said. It was the Sydney trough and the Port Peak. Yeah. That's exactly right. As nice. Reese Williamson points out, five of the last six matchups have been in the Adelaide Oval. Bang on. Uh, hey, what are the dimensions of the SCG versus the Adelaide oh, Oval, Alex? No. The, the SCG has actually got a bigger square meter each than the Adelaide Oval. What is it compared to the MCG, though? I don't know. It's like five metres smaller. <laughs> uh, Sorman says, I'm not convinced Swans are back to their peak 2024 form. I think we've seen their the, – the, the last time we saw them was the best footy we'd seen them play since that Geelong game. It just happened to be the last 30 minutes of football we've seen from the Swans. Mm. That's kind of my one big problem is that the first three quarters of that – GWS had their number. Like it was kind of it's like GWS though. They uh, they always have people were tipping them to win the flag. King Charlie kicked three against the Swannies last time. Says Power Porn no, Star. Sawman says see you at the S S G C. So he's going to go to the Sydney Ground Cricket. Yeah, good. Uh, <laughs> a bit worried about that. <laughs> he's going to Allianz next door yeah, for the NRL. You know, Olympic Park or something. It's going to be like, wait. Wait a second. Where yeah. is everybody? Uh, but I mean, if Port actually do this, remarkably, it would be the first. Port away final win since 2014. Yeah. Which is crazy. Considering that they've been in the finals a lot yeah. over yeah. the last 10 years, for it to be their first away win would be psychotic. Yes. Uh, especially considering it's like, you know, the best team we've seen in 150 years. <laughs> but before we get into any more stats, and like I guess the stats that we sort of throw out there each week with the offense, defense, like we know the Swans is the best offense in the league. Port was eighth. Defensively, remarkably enough, Port were third. Yeah, I still don't know how much. Like, I feel like their pressure, as we saw against the Hawks last week, right? That's where their defense sort of comes in, where it's just like consistent. They drag you into playing their game. That's how they beat you, and that's how they sort of have like this really good defensive rating of like seventy six point two points given up per yeah. game. Do we like? There's nothing that really sort of strikes fear into me though, like of that power backline. No, so. What do we think? How does that match up? The offense, the defense. It's what Sydney were ranked six, I think, in defense, but yeah. that was randomly because there's not that many points separate. It was like what, seven two, points six, between. So. Yeah, it was seven points first through first through six. I think yeah. it was in the end. So, so Sydney, goal. Sydney have that classic between one and six of offense defense. You're yeah. in the premiership window, obviously. Port a little bit out on offense, which tracks. And uh, I don't know, like you've got Georgiades versus the Sydney defense. You've got the Sydney offense versus the Port defense. Like and then you just got these awesome midfields just going head to head. Yeah. And I feel like the Sydney the Sydney offense versus the Port defense, I feel like that's in Sydney's favor, despite some of their yeah. offensive woes. I think they have more avenues to goal than Port. And uh, as for Port's offense versus that Sydney defense, I don't know. How do you feel about it, Leo? I think Port's defense has it easy when their midfield pressures the way they did last week. Like, it's a lot reliant on their midfield, and I think they'll start hot port, but they got battered by the end of our game. It was a very physical game. Horn Francis was cramping terribly. Mm. Like, they would be very sore. I think they'll 
run out of legs here. You've also got Burton. Burton's in off a calf as well, mm-hmm. which is, you know, it's a worry. No one's fully fit, but bringing someone in off a soft tissue is always a bit of a concern. And Power Prawns, I agree. Alia is a gun. The Swans did have him. We gave him up and he's an All-Australian. I think, like Leo said, for Port to have their best chance is the pressure from the midfield. So you're hitting the sky balls into yeah, the Swans forward line and Alia's just like, ha-ha, intercept mark, let's go. Yeah. Whereas if the Swans can get a bit of a you know, a bit of a gap when they're kicking the football low and hard into the forward line, which you've got Errol, Chad, Heaney delivering the footy, the Swans forwards and even the small forwards are just going to have a field day because mm. Alir is great in the air. He's a bit of a liability when it hits the ground. Yeah, Alir Alir is awesome. Brandon Zerk yeah. Thatcher, as Power Prawn Star points out, he's been really good. He's been really good in this uh, final series. Yeah, but it's like the dudes like Bergman. And Bergman's yeah, very, Bergman's very been good. fantastic. William Drew, William Will, eh, Willem. Willem. I said it right the first time. What are we doing here? Willem Drew <laughs> and Miles Bergman. I love, like in talk about pressure, like it comes from them, and I think as well, especially around the stoppages, just like sort of getting on the outside, just styming every sort of little bits and movement. So I don't know. Let's talk about the three key players we think we have for each team. Yep, this is the new thing for the prelim and for the grand final. Cool. Uh it's pretty easy for me. Yep. Go. Port, Zach Butters, Mitch Georgiades, and Jason Horn Francis. Georgiades, all he does is kick three goals. That's just what he keeps on doing. Yep. It's awesome. Like, let's go, Mitch. Butters was incredible last week coming off his rib knock, which was <laughs> running around like a soccer pack. Just lunatic gear. And Horn Francis was fantastic to the point where it's like, he's just going to win this game. Like, he has these moments where he's like, he's like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a heaney. Yeah. I'm going to win this game off yeah. my own back. And you're like, okay, can you also not try to fight everybody? Just yeah. hang on for one second, buddy. Uh, but they're the three most important for Port for me. Alex, what do you reckon? Uh, for Port, I've got Horn Francis as well because I look at Port's midfield and it's explosive. It's, it's not it's not speed, but it's just that it's ex- explosiveness that they can have moments where in five minutes they can take the game away from you. But in those five minutes, they may kick four goals. So I've got Horn Francis and Butters there. But then my next one's Alir Alir because if he can start taking the intercept mark to stop the Swans from scoring but also to help set up Port because he'll have runners coming off him with handball receives – SCG, again, we know it's not that big of a ground. They can transition very quickly into their forward line. So I think Alir is a big player there. Power Prawn Star has said Sydney Small Ford scare the hell out of him. That's I agree with that because Port have a propensity of leaking goals to small forwards. The Wizard last week got a hold of him, and we would say Papley and Will Hay would have very, very big upgrades on the Wizard. I'll pay that. Leo? I've got Horn Francis and Butters, as yeah. you two pointed out, but I've also included Willy Rioli. I just thought last week- Say it correctly. Will yeah. No. Will There we <laughs> go. Uh, I think I thought his creativity last week um, against us was very, very good. Every time he got the ball, you feel like something was going to happen. And he ha- had that incredible, like, little just dark kick. <laughs> yeah. That, well, I think we hit on on the Sunday show, right? Like, he just nailed it into... Yeah. It was a cross field. Like uh, sweet or somebody on the forward line. No, nah, he hit yeah. sparkle knuckle. Um, yeah, I think it was maybe. knuckle, yeah. But it was absolutely sick. And you're like, dude, how did you even see that, let alone actually kick yeah, it just that boop, way? It was boop, awesome. Boop. Uh, but I love that call on Willie. Yep. Yeah, because if he kicks, you know, three potentially four goals, that goes They're a long way yeah, You think the game. he and Georgiades probably have to kick six or six between to eight between them. them for him to win. Yep. Charlie Dixon will kick 12. Yeah. Uh, Sydney, who are the three key players for the Swans? Easy one for me. Whoa, where roll. Alex is wearing the shirt. It has his name on it. <laughs> and uh, away we go. <laughs> yeah. The... Like, just if he has a really, really good game, it's hard to see them losing. Yep. That's what happened. Like, there's almost a direct correlation between he and my second one, second one, Isaac Heaney. Yep. If they have good games, they just don't lose. To the point where I believe with Sydney, if Heaney has, like, an actual half-decent game, statistically, they don't lose. I think they're 14-2 and two when he's got 20-plus disposals and a goal. Huh. That's ridiculous. That's it. That's actually really. How many of those games going into the last quarter was he like thirteen and two? Collingwood. <laughs> the Collingwood and two. So that'd be they would have lost the Frio game and the St Kilda game. They're yeah. the two. They've lost them by three points. Also, who needs the stats boy? You got yeah. stats man. Yeah, <laughs> stats Jim. <laughs> come around tomorrow, Karen. Kick him out. <laughs> okay. Uh, and my third is Tom Papley. Yeah. So actually, Power Prawn Star hit on this right about how the Sydney small forward scare him. Like, Papley's that exact dude where it's like, is it a final? Cool. Where are we? SCG. Sick. Here's three goals. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, what? And the, he's, yeah, he's the barometer for the crowd as well. Like, mm. gets them up, celebrates like there's no tomorrow. Everybody hates him. He doesn't care. Yeah. Like, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, if Papley does 
literally almost anything. Like if he gets more than a goal, like it's hard to see Sydney losing the game. Like that's and, how. And you also got to remember he was first up for eight weeks coming into that uh, uh, final as well. He's also had 15 plus disposals in their last seven finals. Tom Papley. Yeah. Big game player. It's not bad. Uh, how about you, Alex? Your three key swans. Yeah. Uh, Chad Warren is the first one. I think he's had games that he's floated in and out of in the last couple of months, but when he's been on, he's been electrifying and it has helped win Sydney the game. You think he had seven clearances in the last quarter against GWS, his last quarter alongside Heaney against Collingwood. You need him to do more than one quarter, though. You need it to be three to four quarters of good footy. If he can get 25 to 30, remember that Carlton game where he's just running through the midfield laughing his ass off, taking three bounces? If he can do that, the Swans are going to go close to winning. Same goes for Brody Grundy. Massive game for Grundy up against Big Jordan Sweet, who had a massive game last week. Yep. Grundy is the guy who seemingly goes well off a break. I need him to play well here for the Swans to be a chance. This is a bit of a different one. Harry Cunningham. Ooh. Locking down. Where? He has been the best small defender in the competition this year. Blake Hardwick says hello. Blake Hardwick who? Uh, Blake he's Hardwick also just threw an elbow into your face right yeah, there. He's, <laughs> but he's also abs- he's, he's blanketed uh, Brent Daniels a couple of times. He's blanketed Charlie Cameron. He's taken on all the dangerous forts. He's had one goal kicked on him in six weeks. Jeez, not bad. Let's go, Harry. As Taj Thorne points out, yeah, I think the Sydney Smalls and whichever mid rotates through could pose huge problems for them. Also points out, I think if Errol goes 25 plus Sydney win, yep. Errol will cop Drew. Yeah. His power points are. Yeah, Willem Drew will run with him. Interesting. Drew's more inside, though, I reckon. Yeah, but the problem is. You Let's pro- go, Harry. Will- Willem- turbocharged golden Will- retriever. Willem like Drew probably can't tag Heaney. He's probably not strong enough to. Maybe Warner then. Interesting. Uh, in addition to my Papley one about the 15 plus in seven straight, he's also kicked two plus goals in seven of his last home games. Yeah, nice. Not bad. Hey, Leo, who are your three key swans? I've gone with Heaney because he's a god. I've gone with Chad Warner because his pace is electrifying. Alex touched on it. I think if he can get his burst away from stoppage so Port's pressure is just irrelevant, uh, then I think that'll go a long way for the swans winning this game. And I've gone with Dane Rampey, similar to why you've gone with Cunningham, but if he can shut down Georgiades, that limits one a massive avenue for goal. So you think Rampey goes to Georgiades and not Tom McCartan? I think so. I think Tom McCartan has to play on the bigger body. Okay. Even though it is Dixon. So that means Lewis Melican and Asava can just uh, just meet each other over yeah. on the side. They can just play like play cards. <laughs> they can just go hang in the forward pocket, <laughs> hang out. Just can I compare R.M. Williams boots or something? <laughs> uh, all right, that's good because that sets us up for a couple of these looks for stats. Boy always rolls out with a couple of uh, good stats for the players. We've already hit on a couple, but Heaney has gone for thirty plus touches in three straight home games too. Not it's bad. not bad. Okay, yeah. Dude can play a bit. Uh, this is the sort of game where you go, you've grabbed a qualifying final by the scruff of the neck and won it off your own back. Can you do it in a prelim? If you can, like you almost unimpeachably go, and then if you have a half-decent grand final, maybe win a Norm Smith, like you're a top three AFL player. Yeah. Like bang. Yeah. Top three. Simple as that. You've just had like a final series for the ages. It's there on the table for him. Can he grab it? It's also there on the table for someone like Hornet and Butters too. Exactly. Hornet has had one goal in seven straight games as well, at least a goal. Yeah, I nice. love a bit of Hornet, 20 plus and a goal. And Logan McDonald has kicked a goal in six straight at the SCG as well, <clears throat> which is pretty fun. So I think the big question mark for me is that Sydney forward line and where you have all those avenues to goal. You've got a Marty. Logan McDonald, Hayden McLean, like all these dudes sort of floating around. This is where Big Doss could take 10 marks. You're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And that's kind of like the thing where you're like, Alir Alir is only one dude sometimes. But he's still got this pretty yeah. handy, but juice. And I think that's where it's all going to sort of come down to. I think if you have Warner kicking one or two goals, they win. Yeah. If Heaney has like a goal, it might be over. Uh, but the power can just like drag the power. Yeah, that yeah, checks the out. Power. Yeah. Uh, if they can drag this in the mud, and how do they do that? It's stoppages, it's butters, it's rosé, it's wine. So, some of our best bits slash tips for this game brought to you by Top Sport. Love this. Power Prawn Star's got 20 and 2. I love that. Yeah. It's one of my best bets always because he's read my mind. He's looking at our notes. <laughs> Jason Horn Francis, 20 plus disposals and any time goal is one of my all time favorites this year. It has delivered plenty. Uh, 
And my classic when it comes to power is the 25-25-20, yep, which yep. is 25 for Butters, 25 for Rosie, which has been way off. Yeah, that hasn't been way good off. for you. He got to 20 eventually last week, I think. Maybe 19, maybe 20. Yeah. I think he snuck over the 20. And Wines has been fantastic like the last, what, two, three months. So uh, this sort of just hinges, and I think you'll get pretty decent actually looks if you can get Rosie at 25. Uh, if he gets there, I'm not – wildly convinced this week, but I still can't, you know, shirk the 25, yeah. 25, 20. Uh, and Heaney, 20 plus touches yeah. and two goals, 25 yeah. plus touches and two goals, mm. 30 touches and two goals. I feel okay about all of those and I'll be laddering yeah. that, I think. I haven't also games. mentioned the Swans are unbeaten in prelims at the SCG too. Well, you just did. Yeah. <laughs> we hadn't got to it yet. <laughs> all right. So, how do we feel about this with our Sydney versus Port Adelaide AFL today? Same game multi brought to you by Top Sport, the home of footy finals. Whoa, Errol Goulden, 25 plus disposals. Yep. He's done that in 17 of his last 21. On the fence about that one. Chad Warner, 20 plus disposal. He's done that 19 of his last 20 times in the SCG. On board. Pretty good. Zach Butters, 25 plus disposals. Yep. He's had 27 plus in his last couple against the Swans. Yeah, no, I'm on board with this. Chad Chunley Warner, anytime goal. Yep. Willie Rioli, anytime goal. I like it. Are we okay with this? If I was to rate it and rate your multi, I'd give it an eight. Ooh, that's pretty good. What about you, Alex? I'd probably change the Willie one to maybe a Georgiades. But that's just me, just in case Harry Cunningham clamps again. Sure. Georgiades, though, just keeps kicking three, so I'd make it two yeah. for Mitch. But Fair enough. I just wanted to keep Willie in there for the anytime. Yep. Fair. Cool. I just like it. You like Willie anytime, do you? I do. <laughs> cut that out. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and when I say cut it out, put it on the socials. Let's yeah. go. So that's the same game multi, multi for the AFL Today Show for that prelim. Yep. What's the big question? It's the... Has Port already played his grand final? I think so, you know. they. I mentioned they were battered after like our game. They were so sore towards the end of it. We had chances to win it. Obviously, we didn't. They were the better team, but they looked really, really tired. I think they might run out of legs. I agree. I think they did as well. Um, there was you had you had the emotion of the week where you know you had Guinea's comment. You've been belted by eighty. Everyone's questioning you. You're like you're no good. You're fake. It's this. And that's finals. You fall off the wagon again. And they've lifted and they've thrown everything into it. So this could be that big adrenaline dump, physical dump game where they're just. They're just flat. It's one of those things you don't know till the game starts, but 10 minutes in, it could be like, that. oh, they're flat. But mentally, they're going and going, we just beat Sydney. We always beat Sydney. That is entirely my look at this game. With all due respect to Power Prawn Star, who says, I love Willie. And I've got to keep, I've got to stop saying that on camera, but here we are. (laughs) Uh, Did the Swans win? Says, G'day, fellas. Is Alex as nervous as I am? Not yet. He is. He's just hiding it. People keep forget keep forgetting Port was the only team to win all six of their last games. Sure. Sure. Good on. In the home and away. Port play better when Ken's job's on the line. And if it's safe because they made a prelim, says Boston Aries. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah. yeah. Dot, dot, dot. That's my entire thing. Yep. The emotional come down from last week of yep. just riding the high. Yep. Actually pulling it off. At home. At home in front of your fans. Your three-point win over the Hawks. A tough game. The after siren special from Ken, fly, eagles, fly. Uh, I struggle to see how Port can get back up to that height on the road, even against their bunny team. And all due respect to Port, like just killing Sydney for eight years, I'm all about it. I just think they've already kind of like done their dash. Yep. Like it's hard to sort of get around it. Sydney rested at home. They've looked inexorable at times this year. They have also looked randomly like Horrendous. vulnerable at home. So uh, Power Pro Star does point out, I've heard no one saying this week, what if Port's midfield goes nuts? So lads, what if Port's midfield goes nuts? I mean, I kind of hit on that in that 25-25-20. Yeah. Like that's their key, right? And if they have the 25-25-20, from Butters, Rosie, Wines, and you also get the Horn Francis 20 and a goal, 20 and two. Yeah. Port can win that. They 100% can. Yeah, for sure. But they need Rosie to lift. Rosie needs to be way better. So should Port be playing, praying for rain, says Sorman? Well, they might need to because the weather in Sydney looks pretty decent. <laughs> Oof. Rain dances. 
I think Port will make this a game. Okay. Yeah, so do I. I, however, think Sydney will just pip them in the end. I've actually got them by 18 at this point. That is just where they sort of run over them late and Port probably just run out of steam down the stretch and they kick the last two goals to put it out of their reach in the last five minutes and you're like, that game was awesome. I can't quite see Sydney kicking their heads in. I just think Port's game is just going to try to like really ruin the Swans. Mm. Like this is trying to get – give – Port as much credence as they deserve, right? This has been a really good team at times this year when they kicked their heads into the Swans. That was amazing. But at the same time, that was their peak. That was Sydney's trough, as we pointed out. I just think Sydney get it done. Best on ground, I'm going to say Heaney. Nice. Yeah. Alex. Swans get the job done by four goals. They lead all the way. Heaney best on as well. Nice one. Will Alex rip up a Swans jumper if they lose? I'm not a fake fan like Marcus. (laughs) Nice. Leo. Well, we've got a hat trick here because I'm going Sydney by nine points and I'm going Heaney best on ground as well. <laughs> Jeez, I think we just shocking. love Heaney. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Need stats boy to pipe up and go, oh, maybe Chad Warner. <laughs> or, uh, or him to go, I don't rate Heaney. Boston Airs. Maybe Willem Drew. Boston Airs, SCG will get them over the line. I'll yeah. pay that. Port by one after being up 35 at the half, says Power Prawn Star. Don't mind that. Marcus wrecked for no reason, lol, 100%. <laughs> all right. So we've actually all gone the Swans. Does that fill you with confidence, Alex, or not? Um, yeah, I've I've been confident all week. Just I, th- I as as said, I think the Swans having the rest and Port Adelaide having the big potential drop off after last week, throwing everything that they could at Hawthorne and just getting over the line where they were quite clearly the better team. Yeah, and Hawthorne nearly snatched it. So I think there's they've just there's something weird with Port Adelaide in finals, but they beat the Swans, so it's. <laughs> I love it. I love footy. I love footy. (laughs) It's chaos. Hook me up to the chaos machine. We'll go even more chaotic for the second preliminary final. Saturday evening. Not night. Evening. 5.15 p.m. at the MCG. Geelong. Let's just check these odds. Still $1.74 to win. Four and a half point favorites. And the Brisbane Lions are $2.10. It's pretty close. Just saying, the over-under is 171.5. How do we feel about that to start off with? Straight I think over. Yeah, I think that will hit the over. Two very exciting offenses. Yeah. So when they've played in the past, this was a shocking game back in April. Uh, it was a rain game, wasn't it? 37-63. He's been kicked four goals, 13. Ugh. Horrible game 13. last year. <laughs> oh, that was the rain game last year. Uh, prior to that, didn't hit this over. Prior to that, did not hit this over. Prior to that, did not hit this over. I think there's a trend there, gentlemen. Doesn't hit the over. I might have to go the under. Interesting. Uh-huh. The Lions offense has been fantastic. We understand that. Uh, accuracy. I mean, there's the- They kicked 15-15. Exactly, but swings and roundabouts wouldn't actually matter. They kicked six goals straight, so when it mattered, when they needed to. And Joey Duckett's just like- Full um, Joe. It's like, uh, I don't know, the- the spirit of uh, big Roger Merritt just leaned down and just <laughs> kissed him on the top of the noggin as he was kicking the. Oh, Roger Ash- Merritt. Ash- was, McGrath. I was going to say Roger Merritt wasn't exactly a sharpshooter, but Ash Maybe- McGrath, Miracle on Grass. Alistair Lynch, oh. Daniel Daniel Bradshaw. Alistair Lynch is much better. That's a good one. Maybe Alistair Lynch just leaned over the fence and just gave him a kiss. Anyway, <coughs> <laughs> the way this is set up is that the moon? Uh, need some whiskey. Uh, Geelong Brisbane. There's a storied history between these two teams anyway, right? Which is awesome. We've had two prelims in the last, what, five years already? This will be the fifth in five years. So three in five years. Uh, 2020, Cat smashed them by 40. That was at the Gabba. 2022, Cat smashed them. Oh, that was, 49. That, this was was, that was horrendous. That was bloodbath. Mm. That was one of those games where, oh, Brisbane are never going to win the MCG again, like yeah. ever. Like, in 30 years, they won't have won another game here. Yeah. And that's kind of the big stat. <laughs> Do you like lumbering a toilet? Yes. Uh, 24 is a different Brisbane team. Yeah. They've all won another final on the road already, which is crazy because that's kind of the point here. You might have heard this stat, Leo. Brisbane are 2-16 and 16 at the MCG over the last 10 years. 
And who have they beaten in those two games? The D's. Melbourne. Melbourne. <laughs> anyway. The other thing was, in the Fagan era, they were one and three away from the Gabba in finals. Yep. After last week, they're now two and three. Does that fill you with a little bit of hope? No. No. Really? No, no. Not at the they, G? They, they beat no, uh, no, a half full GW, half field stadium at NG. Like, no, nah, it does. It does. It like, does. if you did it at the Adelaide Oval, I might care a little bit more. Interesting. Uh, or Perth. You have to cast your mind back 20 years to the 2020, uh, two, uh, the 2004 prelim. Brisbane won at 84-75. That was also the last time Brisbane beat Geelong in Melbourne. Yep. Funnily enough, Brisbane were the home team that night. Which is weird because Port Adelaide were finished on top of the ladder. And now, we did talk about the uh, Geelong team and what what was that 2004 Geelong team? We couldn't remember. It was like Ablett, Bartel. Exactly. They all like, played like it's 10 the babies. games. It's yeah. the baby cats. It was awesome. And they made a prelim because it was like, 25-year-old Tom Harley, 25-year-old Stephen King. Yeah. It's like they're the sort of like stars of the team. And two years later. You've got a baby Jimmy Bartell. You've got a baby, baby, baby. Uh, Gary Ablett Gary Jr. Ablett. had 13 touches and kicked two goals. He was 19. Yeah. That's ca- you even had like just a baby Max Rook, a baby Chappie. Max Rook he was, was never a baby. He had a beard the whole time. Paul Chapman was 22 and would have been bald and looked like, <laughs> like anything. It's awesome. Anyway. And it's then just, two years later, they nearly sacked Bomber Thompson and thankfully they didn't. They won the grand final in 2007 by 170 million points. 20-year-old Jay, uh, James Kelly. 22-year-old Joel Corey. James Kelly's still playing. 19-year-old Tom Lonigan. Like, it was such a weird team, and I love it. And this was, yeah, this was the tail end of uh, Black, Ackermanis, Voss, uh, Lappin. Yeah, Mm. well, they make, yeah, they lose that grand final to Port. (laughs) Yeah. And away they go. So I guess it kind of sets up as just the simple idea of, like, Brisbane don't win in Melbourne. Brisbane just don't win at the MCG. Can they sort of flip it? Did baby Jim... Still have a fancy beard. Ah, uh, no. When did you grow the beard? I fir- 18. Okay. I grew my first one. Uh, it was really annoying because I was the youngest kid in my high school year and I never had thought about growing a beard to like get into pubs. <laughs> and then I turned 18, I actually had my ID. I'm like, oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> what am I doing? They call it a beard. Crandall. <laughs> oh, jeez. I never got one. Uh, once did I ever get asked for ID. It was so dumb. Anyway, uh, yeah, that sucked. But anyway, uh, so we've got some other ones here. Got, I think Cats by two goals says, did the Swans win? I want Lions by one point in double overtime. <laughs> I like that. I hope so bad that Brisbane win this game. Then we can t- tow Geelong out to sea and sink it. Says Powell He's still it. getting over 2007. Or two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sawman is a good one. Brisbane win is simple. Play the first half from the elimination and the second half from the semi. I love that. That's yeah. pretty, That's yeah. exactly right. So they that were, means they'll win about 120 to 6. <laughs> they, were almost flaw- they were almost flawless, basically flawless, in that yeah. first half of the elimination final. Incredible in the second half of the semi, obviously. Swans by 118 says lols cow. So not Love bad. your confidence, lols cow. <laughs> but I guess in terms of like the uh, some of the other stats, if we want to go a little bit stat boy wonky, Brisbane's covered the line in eight straight as an underdog, which Jeez. is pretty cool. So yep. thing is, that's covering the line. That's still plus four and a half. So there is still a little bit of wobble room where they lose by yeah. three. True. And away they go. Uh, but this was my thing that I brought up last week. Since the start of May... The Brisbane Lions of Brisbane, Queensland. Yep. Located specifically in the Woolen Gabba area of Brisbane. Above the 28th parallel. Above the 28th parallel of this big blue marble we call the planet Earth. Ah, yes. Have lost three games since the start of May. Three. Three! That's not many. (laughs) So, form is on their side. I feel like they've played themselves just into holes and then back out of holes in yeah. this final series. Yeah. Like they came back from 44 points down last week. Yeah. That's incredible. They've got the belief they can win away in a final as of last week again. I'm fascinated by this game so to the I'm point where I'm going to get to it. I don't mind Brisbane. Yeah. We'll get to it. Mm. Who are the three oh, this, key players? So, so before we get to that, I saw an amazing stat, and this reminded me that Sawman said it. Brisbane was one of the only two teams to beat the greatest team this year, Gold Coast at home. So no team that has lost to the Gold Coast has won the premiership that year. 
Port Adelaide lost in Gold Coast, and Geelong got smashed in that weird Darwin game. Brisbane are going to win. There you go. Flag Lions? Yeah, anyway. Uh, Brisbane is one of only two teams to beat the greatest team this year, Gold I, Coast at home. I just and read it, that out. I know. And it's like <laughs> this entire idea of the 28th parallel. Yeah. Like how worried do we then get that again travel for the second week? You're away from the yeah. 28th parallel. And that's the thing. You've you, Even to win next week and then get to the grand final, it's three straight weeks of travel. Yeah, it's it's, mm. it's very hard to do. Yeah, definitely. Geelong are a bunch of dirty hippies, says Power Prawn Star. There's no lie. Look at what happened to Chris Scott's hair. Yeah, he got awesome. <laughs> Chris Scott looks like the world's greatest single dad <laughs> who's just like slaying every divorced <laughs> mum of Geelong. Slaying <laughs> <It's> just slaying <laughs> It is... Chris Scott vibes, I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, let's do it. Three key players for each team for the Cats. Jazz up. Yeah, obviously. Tom Stewart, now that he's back. Brad Close. That's weird. Has a goal in the Very MCG, weird. I think, almost every time he's played there. Okay. I think it might be like nine straight. Uh, but it's really sort of, that's more indicative of like Grian Myers, Brad Close, the smalls around Jezza. Manor from heaven. Sean Manor, who... They came out and said, hey, uh, we should have been playing him all season. It's like, oh, do oh, come on, man. Anyway, Your super coach team says so. Exactly. I had him all year. <laughs> he was yelling it from the clouds. But it's like Stengel, Close, and Grind Myers around the tall timber. And like, we'll get to some of the other tall timber in a second. But Jezza is obvious, makes just a lot of sense. He's at the MCG. He loves him with the G. Off we go. Tom Stewart. Why is he key? Well, he's key to what they do, yep. but how healthy is he as well? It's a big one, right? So, and Brad Close, just those guys snagging goals. I yeah. think Stengel's got three plus in their last three, so pretty crazy. Mm. Alex Geelong, three keys. Jezza, quite clearly, quite obvious, the, probably the most important player in the game. Danger, does he have another big final left in him at the MCG? He's the type of guy that can rip it open with just 20 touches. And weirdly, Ollie Henry. Just to help Jezza and the Fords out, he really needs to keep, kick a couple of goals, even if it's just two. Just to take ease the pressure off Jezza. Nice. Just to chip in with that little thing. Leo? Well, I've you've basically covered them all. Jezza, Danger, and Stewart. I just think those three, when they're firing, yeah. they're like the main barometers for the cats. And it's yeah. just that like spine. Yeah, literally. I like that. Lots of great hair for this game, says the stats boy. Ashcroft, Dempsey, Stewart, Chris Scott. Yeah. It is. A good hair game. It's a great hair game. Loman. <laughs> yeah, Kyle Loman's bleach. Let's go. Yeah. This is awesome. Uh, random Q for you boys as did the Swans win SDK left out for the Cats should the Swannies be making a call you just saw my tw saw my Twitter did the Swans win I did say that 20 minutes ago he was yelling about it in the office yeah honestly just <laughs> my point is get Sam DeConing on the Blues to go with Tom DeConing we'll keep all the DeConings would you trade Sam DeConing for Tom DeConing no, no that's the dumbest trade ever <laughs> Tom's awesome uh, but yes I would absolutely take Sam sorry Frosty Solomon does ask no Sam DeConing is Joe Danaher going to run free um, no. nah. it's a tough matchup for that yeah. back line Interesting. Uh, but that does get us to the three keys for the Lions. We just mentioned it. Joey Duckett, Joey Danaher. Can Full he keep Joe. his kicking boots on? He does love the MCG. We've talked about this time and time and time big again. Big game player now too. He is a very big game player. Uh, and I think in terms of his record of the MCG, in the big games against Collingwood when he was with Essendon, yeah. he'd always show up. Every time he's come back down with the Lions, he's actually been one of the dudes who has stood up. Grand final last year, half decent. Let's go, Joey Duckett's. If He's just such a tough matchup for this Cats back line, right? In terms of their size, you sort of look along there, you go, they've named Blixavs at uh, halfback, sure. Mm. It's like, other than that, it's like Zach Guthrie, Jack Bose. I thought it'd be Jack Henry Jack personally. Henry. Jack Henry, yeah. sure. And you've also got, I mean, they've still got to worry about Hipwood too, but do you? Do you? <laughs> do you? No. Uh, either way, some good ones there. And in terms of other guys that I'm looking at, Charlie Cameron and Kyle Lohman. We're just yep. going to go the smalls in that forward line too. Yep. Because they've got to basically outpace the Geelong smalls. Yep. Simple as that. That's all forward lines because I do love my Jack Payne's and my Harris Andrews, but Brisbane, offense, you've got to blow Geelong off the park. Yep. To beat them. Simple as that. I don't know if their defense is going to slow them down. You're going to take Geelong out of their game, and I think if your forwards can make him pay, away you go. Yep. Alex Lyons. Lockie Neal. Very simple because he's been very poor in his last five to six finals. He really needs to lift. Hasn't had above 25 possessions in those finals. I know he's carrying a bit of a heel issue, but it's finals, mate. 
painkilling injection, couple of Panadols, get out there and get going. You, you're probably going to win your third Brownlow this year. Do it in finals. That's the one thing that's missing from his resume. Also, not a medical doctor. Just, yeah, just definitely not a medical doctor. Jack Payne, weirdly enough, because he's probably going to go on Jezza, maybe, because Harris Andrews won't take the key, won't won't take Jezza because he likes to free himself up for the intercept marking role. So Payne keeping Jezza quiet, very important. And man built for the big stage. Huge McCluggage. Huge. He's had good games. He was great in the grand final last year. This is the game where he needs the, the, the Heaney esque, the Chad Warner esque game of 20, 25, and two goals. He needs to hit the scoreboard. He has done it before in big games. He needs to lift. Like it. Leo? I've gone with Lockie Neal. Uh, same with Alex. Just because I think I remember back to a final against the D's a couple of years ago where he was just a man possessed. He was winning every hard ball there was. So if he can do that again, that he'll just carry the Lions like, on their back. Since pre-COVID, his finals have been awful. I remember one final, like 46 touches, but like yeah. since then, it's just been... I've gone with Jack Payne as well, same with Alex, just because he's... Like last week, he held his own against GWS. They did a little ring of Rosie around with the key forwards. Yep. Can he do it again this week? That's going to be a huge matchup. I've gone with Eric Hipwood. I've gone with Eric Hipwood. Oh, boy. Only because I look at this Geelong back line, we did touch on it, but... Blixavs, Henry, Buse, Kolodjazny, they're not the tallest blokes. One of them can cover Joe or like a multitude could cover Joe. Hipwood needs to see this matchup and go, I need to actually buddy do something here and kick three or four He's goals. had some weirdly good finals at the uh, MCG he has, as well. Yeah, against the Ds, yeah. Yeah. So he needs to step up. So he's a huge, huge factor. So Joey Duckett's has also kicked – in 44 games, the MCG's kicked 85 goals. Yep. I love that. That's not bad. And uh, Hipwood at the MCG. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't tell him. <laughs> he's played 16 games. How many goals has he kicked? 20. 40. 29. Yeah. Okay. Split middle. middle. It's not bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, Jack Payne's tactic, if he's on Jezza. Jezza, how are the cows and the sheep? <laughs> He won't oh. matter. It won't mind too much because he's actually in the state. So yeah, but it's also like you know, if it's pretty warm and it's sunny outside, you know, how's the crop going? It's a bit warm. Kind of want there. a bit of rain so you yeah. can just uh, yeah. get under. Start talking about the rain. Yeah. Or <laughs> it's just like, oh, yeah, I reckon there's a bit of beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Off we go. Craig M says Lions Geelong winner wins the whole thing. Oh, this game oh. is is that Craig McRae? Yeah, <laughs> Craig Moller. Yeah, it is Craig McRae. It's Flea Fly. <laughs> Flea oh, yes. Fly. Emery's. Geelong are the Chinese of the AFL. Oh, they all are. Oh, no, you can't say yeah. that. Uh, didn't see your Twitter. Great minds think alike, alike says, uh, did this one's win. Best bets. These are just like the ones that sort of stick out to me. Stengel first goal kicker. Nailed that two weeks ago. Yep. I was stoked. You missed we're, it though. We're doing the live stream. <laughs> I didn't watch it because I never saw a goal from all of Geelong during that stupid live stream. Uh, I That's love Stengel. you're an idiot. Stengel's also like just snagging goals anytime he basically steps on a field at the moment. Three plus in his last three finals. Yeah. That's huge. Love being a bit of Stengel. Joey Duckett's, he's got two plus in eight of his last nine. Riding high. He loves, loves the G. Love him as a two plus. And Jezza has three plus in three straight games as well. Not bad. Jezza so, has this ridiculous MCG finals record too. Doesn't mind. He can just go out there and kick five. Yeah. One of the other ones that I, I love just as a bit of a multi edition is Shannon Neal. Going the other Neal. Anytime goal in yep. 50. Dean straight games. That's why the Tomahawk isn't playing. That's ridiculous. And we hit on that. I, well, I mentioned the tall timber aspect of the Geelong forward line. Like you, you hit on uh, Ollie Henry and your key players, yep. right? If he hits any type of bit of the scoreboard, Neil does a bit of something, Jezza does something, it gets really, really hard for yep. Brisbane to keep up. Away we go. Uh, and Sorman asked, goalless slugfest or shootout? Shoot I'd probably it. lean shootout. towards shootout. So will I. Yeah. Uh, even though- I thought you said under. The last five went under, <laughs> but I reckon- I don't know. It can be a yeah. shootout and still go under. Just I saying. agree. And Cam Rayner, anytime goal, is one of the other little best ones. Yeah, but nice. here we go. The AFL Today Show, same game multi for Geelong versus Brisbane. Let's do it. Dane Zorko, 25 plus disposals. Yep. Seven to last eight. No you don't think there. that uh, Scott's going to tag him? Who do they, they have to tag? Not really anyone on the half forward line. Yeah. Yeah, maybe Jack Bowes goes to him. Tom Atkins? Yeah, yeah, actually Tom yeah, Atkins Tom is Atkins a Tom Atkins more call. plays half back mid. Yeah, he's, but he's named as Rover here, Tom Atkins, so that yeah, probably yeah. means he's going to Neil. Interesting. Max Holmes, 20 plus disposals. Love that. Love that. Easy. 25 in his last 26. Will Ashcroft, 20 plus. Well, yep. 25 plus in four of his last five. He Coming looks, of age game last week. for the week. finals, that Ooh, dude. Wait. Uh, then on top of that, Jeremy Cameron, two-plus goals. Yep. Loves the G, loves the final. Joey Duckett's two-plus goals. Please make sure we email like these to Tristan. I'm going to do that right now. 
Sweet as. There we go. How do we rate that then, Leo? I rate that a nine. I like it a lot. I think Zorko, the, the tag is the only thing that's uh, worrying yeah. me. I feel like they've learned, though, like if you just tag Neil, like I feel like that's- Well, the last week, uh, Peatling was on Zorko, Peatling right? Did go and that Zorko. did work. Yeah. Uh, as a uh, good friend of the show, Lockie McCurdy, said he had about 600 words of Peatling tagging Zorko that will never see the light yeah. of day. And the surprisingly jacked Callum Dick also had 600 words that will never see the light of day. <laughs> uh, the- I guess the thing is with Zorko, I did sort of toss around the idea of Dunkley in there. Doesn't mind the G as well. Yeah. Uh, Neil, I'm really worried about the heel injury. Yeah, uh, that's fair. Sort of- well, he hasn't got above 25 disposals in his last uh, six finals. So. Exactly. So I'm kind of away from that. All right. Time for the big question. Geelong, Brisbane. It's easy. Yeah. Can Brisbane play its best football on the road again, but this time at the MCG? I mean, the, when it matters. Their last final at the MCG was probably one of the best games they've ever played at the MCG. Exactly. So they can do it. Will they? Don't know. I think they can, and I think they will. I'm going to back them in. I am going to as well. <laughs> Sawman asks, which would be the better prelim? I reckon. I reckon Saturday. Same. I feel like uh, Sydney Port will be a little bit scrappier. Geelong Brisbane might be more aesthetically pleasing. The Cats will yep. demolish them, says Turbocharged Golden Retriever. And Power Prawn Star points out, I'm from a cattle farming family. I talk about breeds and meat quality. Game over. <laughs> we know how to point. distract him. <laughs> <laughs> so is that a, do you have those Wagyu cows? <laughs> are, they, are these grass fed? <laughs> I love that. All right. <laughs> Tips margin. I can't get Brisbane versus Collingwood out of my brain. Yep. Grand final last year. Massive stage. But they did lose. They did lose, but they played <laughs> fantastically. Are you going because it's the vertical stripes rather than the horizontal stripes? Maybe. It's not bad. Brisbane by four. Yeah. I think this game is going to be an absolute cracker. I can't no, wait I to perch wait. up at the pub somewhere in Moore Park on Saturday, Arvo. I'll be couch, tunes. Let's go. So you're not moving for two days. No. And then, to be honest, it'll be like four or five days. There's a lot of football on the weekend. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, Alex. Geelong by 11 points. I just, Chris Scott is a genius. He's got time to get this right. He would have seen everything the Lions have done in the first two weeks. Do you not think he's got a plan to come up to stop them? And he's also like, boys, it's Brisbane at the, at the MCG. Like, seriously. Yeah. Leo? I've gone Lions by 13. I just, I like that stat about uh, since the pre finals buy has come in, that yeah. there's always been a loser in the uh, fr- from the winner of the qualifier. So I think that'll happen in this game. I think Brisbane, there's just be something weird in the air. I think they'll win by 13. And I, I think McCluggage play. will be man of the match. Best on ground. We didn't actually say that. Yeah. Jezza. I'm going to say Joey Duckett's again. I'm going to say he keeps writing last week and just goes, Jezza, 20 and 4. Because that's going to get to my big call for the weekend ahead. Joey Duckett loves the MCG. He's going to kick four. Oh, okay. Then he can go cut a rug at the curtain like he loves to. Uh, I tend to, th- I just think that the size of that Brisbane forward line is going to be a bit of a problem for Geelong. But I think he's the only one who sort of stands up and actually helps them sort of get yep. over the line. And on top of that, I mean, if I want to go for a big one on Sydney, I don't mind Chad Chunley Warner for a 30 and two. That'd be pretty good. Yeah. Uh, like backing Geelong just threw up on my mouth, said Power Prawn Star. <laughs> uh, if Geelong go on to be premiers, can we reject their taxpayer funded training centers? Can we do yeah. that anyway? Yeah, we <laughs> can do it anyway. <laughs> the scoreboard. Uh, but anyway, I think my big call, Joey Duckett's massive, massive game. And uh, Chad Warner, if you just go, if you believe, believe a lot. And he's yeah. at least 25 disposals, two plus goals. Sydney winner running away. Alex. Swans lead from start to finish. The that Swans, is a big call. The Swans <laughs> haven't led at quarter time. I can't remember. Except for the Adelaide game, I cannot remember the last yeah. time they were in front at quarter time. So let's go. Sydney, jump, lead, and win. Don't mind it. I've gone with the Clug for 30 and a goal. I said he'd be man of, man of the match. I think he's going to have an absolutely huge game. As we mentioned, Neil carrying a heel issue. So I think he'll be quelled a little bit. And I think McCluggage, look for him to get on the scoreboard. Nice. Uh Stats Boy says Brisbane by 10 and Ashcroft legacy game. No one game. asked Stats Guy. Come Stats Boy's going to be like, that's Marcus Ashcroft, isn't it? I was about to say, a legacy game when you've had 20 games just means you played your best game. <laughs> that's like, Nick Dacos. <laughs> rate them all Rate now, them all, quick, guy. go. Uh, here's a good one. In 12 of Sydney's last 13, its opponent has been the first to three goals. Oh. That is a big goal there, Alex. Yeah, Start I think finish. I think in a couple of those games, the Swans had kicked like one goal three, one goal four. So they've had opportunities. They just haven't taken them. Yeah. Nice one. So the cool part is both of these prelim matchups have got 
history behind them where they've played plenty of times in pretty big games. This is awesome. What a weekend. What are we keeping our eye on? What is the little things that you just what will you think will sort of, you know, the games will pivot on? Ken. Ken? I've, got, I've just got the camera on Ken. <laughs> Do you, you think, think Ken, Ken will try can. to fight like a yeah you know, pick on someone his own size and it's like nah. he's like ah John Longmire <laughs> hello <laughs> we're friends right <laughs> and then Dean Cox is just standing just going boy say something <laughs> <laughs> all right from last week what we were keeping an eye on Powell's response bang love yeah. that uh, will they fight to save Ken they did Guinea's response he was pretty good Kicked no us. he wasn't good he, was all right he fumbled good. a lot. Hawks speed at Adelaide Oval. They stymied the Hawks yes, speed. Yes, they did well. Incredible. GWS bouncing back from the heartbreak. <laughs> and more heartbreak. They did into more heartbreak. <laughs> <laughs> GWS's crowd. It sucked. Brisbane's accuracy. Still sketchy. Still sketchy. Well, they, they were four goals 12, right? Or four goals 13. Yeah, four 10. Four, one four 13. Four 13, buddy. Hell. 13. And then I've just kept Brisbane's accuracy on for this week. So this week, yeah, Port's yeah. midfield defensive accountability against Heaney, Goulden, Warner, and Co. That's where this game gets won. Literally. Yeah. Like I haven't even mentioned our man Cheeks just in there tackling True. everyone. I love our man Cheeks, friend of the program. And like that's kind of it. The defensive accountability going two ways. Can Port do it? If they do, they stand a really good chance in that I, game. I think if Port bring the pressure they brought last week for the full game, I think they'll win, but I just don't think they will because they'll, wasn't they'll the, be knackered from In the week. GWS Sydney game, wasn't GWS's pressure like the highest yeah, recorded in a final ever and the Swans are just yeah. still you like, get, ah. you could, To keep that up yeah. for Alex, four quarters Alex, is tough. It was elite. Ah, <laughs> thank you, Jim. The pressure gauge. It's green. It means yeah. it's elite. <laughs> I love the ranking. Also, uh, Dane Rampey's 250th and Heaney's 200th this weekend. Pretty good. Big stuff. Uh, the other one, we had Port Forwards versus Sydney Backline. Yep. Whom goes where? And this is still like a really good question, I think, because you got the Sydney Backline. Wait, what did I say? Sydney Backline against Port Forwards. <laughs> That's right. Sydney Backline. Jeez. You had a stroke. Is that the mood? <laughs> Let's go. Tom McCartan, Harry Cunningham, yep. Malikin, Rampey and Co., it's like, can you contain Giorgiardi's yeah. outside of that? How much do you have to worry? Yeah. It's, it's like, like Giorgiardi's and Rioli, and you should be fine. It should be fine. It's like when the Swans played the Crows. It, Thriller got off off the uh, off the chain a little bit, but they shut the other forwards down. Yeah. If Giorgiardi's kicks four, but you're not letting Willie kick one, you, you can call it. Yeah. You can cop it because Hogan kicked three against the against the Swans, but Toby and Daniels didn't kick one. Yeah. So it's like it would be the Port mids chiming in. Yeah. Yeah. It's Rosie's butters. That's like the other thing, the 25, 25, 20. It's also 25 for butters and a goal. Yeah. Rosie kicked the first goal. Yeah, he did. That got game. the free kick on Warhol. There we go. Uh, cool. Cat speed or lack thereof. Uh, that, that, that would be fine. That's the sort of thing where you like look at Brisbane and go, when they busted open Carlton in the elimination final, like the speed was just absolute chaotic. Uh, tore him up. Last week, it wasn't quite as much against GWS. Different ground, not at home. Fascinating to see how the Cats combat that. If the Cats can make them play Geelong's game, Geelong win. Simple as that. And uh, as long as Brisbane don't carve them up like they did against the Blues. And this is the other one. Jezza, Ollie Henry, and Shannon Neal versus the Lions back line Zimba. It's a fun matchup. Yeah. That's a really fun yeah. matchup. I worry about the other way. Yeah, that's With fair. the Brisbane offense versus the Cats team. Starsevich go to Ollie Henry or Stengel just quickly? Ollie Ooh. Henry. You reckon? Yep. All right. Daring is fast enough a to keep up. Ainsworth but. to Stengel, maybe. Hmm. Braden Campbell after nine and a goal in the last quarter, I think, is a swan to watch. Braden Campbell is always Will it be a swan sub to watch. or Fox? I think Campbell will be sub because it's also by just putting Fox in for Mills, you are not messing with like the rotation of the team and just the structure and lineup that they had against GWS. Put Fox in, keep Campbell's a sub. It worked. Mm. You don't need to go changing up. Fox no. is a good sub option though. Like, yeah. You wouldn't hate it if he was sub. No, because yeah. if he's sub and one of the back backs goes down early, he can play a little bit taller. He, he can play a variety of roles. Yeah, yeah, but I'd have I'd just slot Fox straight back into where Mills was and I'd have Braden Campbell as the sub. Nice. Other ones keeping an eye on. Lockie Neal's foot. Just keeping an eye on it. <laughs> it's, a bit, it? it's a bit weird, Jim, is keeping it, an eye on right? feet. <laughs> Only fans. What's going on? Uh, <laughs> Brisbane's accuracy. We're always going to keep an eye on that. And then finally, my favorite, Lohman, Ashcroft, and the Young Lions versus the Young Cats. They're both felines. It's a feline battle. It's a feline bowl. But Holmes, Dempsey, the Young Cats. Like, Holmes has also got a grand final to win after missing out two yes, years ago. Yes, yes. He's got to get back there. 
And does Fagan send Ashcroft to the ball again? Like yes, in the second half. Hundred percent, he does. He starts yeah. on the ball. God, he was good. Uh, Power Prawn Star points out. I was a chef at a hotel that made all the food for the AFL teams. I used to make the food extra good for the teams playing port. So they'd overeat. That's True actually, story. That's very good. I went all so out. He literally just threw a big stick of butter that's in every so good. <laughs> it's like, geez, this is good. Sheeks <laughs> yeah. mm, says Turbo Charge Golden Retriever. Port's opponent in the grand final will be the two teams that beat them by 70 plus. That's pretty funny. I love that. Uh, how much beer will Alex down at the Swans win in the grand final? Yeah, the, <laughs> I'm, I definitely won't be doing <laughs> AFLW today on the Monday. Stats guy <laughs> has been warned. There's also another warning stats guy. Power Prawn Star points out Holmes should get the tag. Yeah, he got off the chain yeah, against Port. Like, he really okay. tore him up. There you go. Those are two awesome games, gentlemen. Yes, yes. So which one are you more excited? Well, you're obviously excited for the Swans game. Leo. I'm probably more excited for the Brisbane-Geelong game because as we touched on, I think it'll be nicer on the eyes. I think Port Sydney will be a bit of a slog fest. Yep. Aesthetics. That's mm. what it's all about. Boom! Oh. Oh. Bo says hi. G'day, Bo. <laughs> We're just about on. to finish. I honestly just hope the Swans come out and win by 12 goals and it's the most boring prelim for everyone else but Swans fans. Obviously. And yeah, Power the Grinch. But Power Prawn <laughs> starts hoping the same for Port. He's hoping for a repeat of August the 3rd. Yeah. Be, to be honest, that would be the funniest outcome if you just didn't have any points. If you're a Port fan and you're like down by eight goals at quarter time, surely you just chuck on that game from the second quarter. <laughs> you're, just, yeah. you're just like, oh, this is pretty and good. Just oh, go, this is what happened. Oh, sure. <laughs> and you've just got Hunter going, this is the top team. How do they what change venues this? in five minutes? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my entire thing. So I'm just like 100% just like, nah, just... I don't want to – the amount of stress I dealt with as a Carlton fan this year, yeah. not once did they just smash a team. See, I, yeah, I don't want to have what I had to deal with two weeks ago in that qualifying yeah, final. Yeah, yeah. That was gross. Want, yeah. Well, the good thing is you're a Sydney Swans supporter, and as we all know, the Swans will romp at home on the weekend and then romp home in the grand final. They're the best team in 150 years. How could they possibly lose? <laughs> Jimmy, you've been saying that all year and they're <laughs> still on top. Exactly. That's why I've backed them. I'm backing them to the hill. <laughs> If they're, I'm 100 percent behind them. I'm going to back them in this game. I'm going to go. I'm going to put the biggest bet I put on this year on the Swans right now. That's going to hurt me more way. than me, so I don't care. <laughs> See what happens. I got my horse <laughs> running at Railwick on Saturday. I'm good. I like it. Several tins says Reese Williamson. Alex, would you will you do a shoey live on camera if the Swans win? Of kombucha, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next week, maybe. Yeah, the grand final. The grand final show. Yeah. Oh, well, sure. I like that. Sawman, me meditate. All yeah. right. Uh, what else? If Porter's losing, how do I turn off the game when I'm at it? <laughs> tins. Yeah, tins. Lots of tins. Many tins. Shout out to Cliff House. There we go. My mediate. I mean, yeah. oh, meditate. I mean, tins yeah. more <laughs> Race three at Randwick on Saturday. God, give him strength. Nice one. All right. Well, that'll do us for the AFL Today show for today. We have, this is, there are three games of AFL men's left this season. Yep. This is the exciting, very, very tip of the spear. It's awesome. I can't wait for these two games. It's going to be an absolute cracker. Well, that's the qu oh, we didn't ask it. And for Power Prawn Star, did this one and everyone listening to me uh, are watching, would you rather lose the prelim or the grand final? Grand final. You're I'd final. rather lose the grand final. Losing grand final. a prelim sucks. That's, that's loser talk. Yeah. Losing a prelim sucks. You're like, oh, we're okay. You get to a grand final, it's yeah. like you get the entire week of excitement. And that's it. At least you've yeah, made you've the made grand it. final. Yeah. Yeah. Legends, peace out. Thank you, Power Prawn Star. All right, thank you to Alex for jumping on before he goes up to Sydney tomorrow. I might not be back for Sunday yet. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> no one cares. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Even Gerald and Omi like that. Uh, and, of course, to Social Boy Leo. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Alex. For a uh, much taller presence in the middle yeah, chair. Yeah. It's pretty good. Well, it's thank not you. hard. I've never been called tall before, so thank you. Uh, but, of course, remember to smash a like for the AFL Today Show across all the socials, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, X. Uh, you know, hit that little bell. Yes, so you get the, the bell. Notifications on YouTube as well. The dinger. Jump in the comments. Have a crack. Off we go. Spotify, uh, Apple Podcast. Rate, review, star, subscribe. Simple as that. All the Chuck some comments in. Uh, and do that for all our other shows as well. Cricket Today podcast, Football Today podcast, NFL Australia, hold all tickets, and of course the AFLW Today show, which will be going absolutely hammer and tongs the rest of the season. Uh, Richmond Carlton are playing right now. Oh, nice one. There sick. you go. Thanks for all your hard work, lads. Whiskey, <laughs> says Liam McCallion. The Who's little stats guy? man. <laughs> Did the Swans win? Prefer to lose a semi. Get well soon, stats boy. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> Is that Karen? Nice one. All right, that's it. We will catch you on Sunday for a prelim wrap 
We will know our grand finalists well, on Sunday. We've also got the Brownlow show dropping Monday. We'll have a Brownlow yes. show for Monday, so you'll have plenty of AFL Today show. Don't worry about that. We will catch you later this week for more AFL Today. Get around them like me getting around a few prelim tins. Are they prelim ready for more drinking? Yes. <laughs> All right, look up yourselves. Remember, footy's back. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.